Welcome to this episode of Mathlete Mondays. I'm Mike Metzger, president of Focal Revenue Solutions. And whether you're a data nerd like me, a fierce competitor, 1001, 1002, or a little bit of both, I'm here today to help you unlock the insights you need for the week ahead in order to outrun your competition and take your hotel's revenue optimization efforts to the next level without breaking a sweat. This week, we're going to talk about some big recent news in the hospitality industry. Last Thursday, it was announced that Airbnb would be buying Hotel Tonight, with sources indicating a purchase price of nearly $400 million in cash and stock. Now, that sounds like a huge amount, yet it's just a drop in the bucket when you consider that Airbnb is worth more than $31 billion. Yes, that's worth a B. With the transaction, Airbnb gains access to 25,000 hotels in 1,700 cities across 40 countries. And the majority of these are boutique and independent hotels. And many industry advocates have indicated their belief that this transaction may be a win for the hospitality industry, as it allows Airbnb to advance its effort to become an end-to-end -end travel provider and to better compete against the duopoly of Expedia and Booking. And I think you can make a great case for this position given that Airbnb's commission and fee structure initially appears so much lower at eight to 20%, rather than the 15 to 30% charged by the major online travel agencies. Additionally, Airbnb's curated approach stands in stark contrast to the commoditized offering by Expedia and Booking. Now, what little negative feedback I have seen revolves around the question of whether Airbnb will allow shared accommodation listings on the Hotel Tonight platform, which would lead to increased competition for participating hotels. And yet, I believe there's something much larger at play here. We need to take a closer look and assess what this transaction truly means for the hotel industry, not just today, but three to five years down the line. Based on a recent report from Skift, only three of Hotel Tonight's executives will actually be leaving the organization, which indicates to me that Airbnb is looking at this as an opportunity to better learn the hotel space rather than just a quick way to gain customers. Additionally, Airbnb usually prefers to grow new divisions internally rather than acquiring new businesses, so they must have seen something pretty compelling with Hotel Tonight. And if you go another level deeper, and this is important, you'll see that the current Hotel Tonight CEO, Sam Shank, will be reporting to Airbnb's president of homes, Greg Greeley, who's actually the creator of Amazon Prime, who Airbnb hired away last year. Now call me Chicken Little, but with this transaction, I truly believe that Airbnb is positioning itself to become an absolute hospitality industry juggernaut. As they continue to advance their effort to become an end-to-end -end industry provider, hotels, I think, will initially rejoice as a new lower cost channel comes along that can help them to drive real volume. But what happens when Airbnb starts to launch their own line of hotels as they're doing with apartments today? Or remember how I told you to pay attention to Greg Greeley? What happens when they start a subscription business model for accommodations where guests pay a flat annual fee to access accommodations across the world? In both scenarios, Hotels will find themselves fighting for the same customer against a smarter, more agile, better funded competitor. Now, do you think I'm crazy yet? Airbnb recently touted a study that indicated 90% of guests who first use an Airbnb to book a hotel room, then return for their second trip, would actually wind up booking a home instead of a hotel the next time around. And let's not forget that there's already bad blood between the hotel industry and Airbnb, and their founding team is just a wee bit competitive. All right, so what can we actually do about it? And we need to gain clarity around our industry's unique selling proposition and to stop dedicating all of our time and energy to the same old battles. Instead, we need to focus on changing the battlefield. Now, the hotel industry's competitive advantage has always been its ability to provide high caliber service. And yet we've always thought of service as a thing that takes place within our walls once a customer has arrived on property. Now, I can't tell you how many times throughout my career but I've heard the refrain that we're in the business of serving customers, not building technology. But as an industry, we fail to realize that in the modern era, we can actually better serve our customers by building technology. Now, in order to compete with the likes of Airbnb, Expedia, Booking, and Google, we need to start reclaiming the interactions with our guests during the buying process. Otherwise, we'll be relegated to the role of unnamed service provider. Now think about the last time you bought something on Amazon. Do you actually remember who the seller was? Or just say you had to press one button in order to buy it, and it magically arrived on your doorstep within 48 hours. Now I hate to say it, but the hotel industry is headed down the same path. 
To reverse the tide, we need to start connecting with our customers on a personalized basis in order to show that we truly understand their needs and desires. Now let me be clear here. When I refer to personalization, I'm not talking about updating the email to say Mrs. Jones rather than valued guest. Although if you haven't done this yet, shame on you. I'm really not even referring to personalized pricing as I think that often far too much thought is given to pricing instead of how we'll actually reach our customers. Instead, I'm referring to the development of persona-based marketing strategies. Now, improving our marketing and revenue efforts starts with completing a 360-degree evaluation of our current customer base. We need to dig deeper than segmentation reports, corporate production, and channel mix, and actually start to evaluate multi-dimensional data that will allow us to distill cause and effect. For example, which channels are booking our highest rated customers, and how does the lead time vary for each? And once we have a feel for who is booking our hotels and how they're doing so, we can start to categorize our best guests into classifications, which we then represent with sample customers. I would encourage you to actually take the time to draw out each sample customer, along with the process they go through when booking accommodations. Make sure you consider all channels that they may interact with throughout their journey, and provide an honest assessment of your branding efforts at every touch point. And once you've completed this exercise, post your personas somewhere prominent where everyone on your sales, marketing, and revenue management team can see them. More importantly, every time you sit down to talk strategy, make sure you refer back to these personas and determine how your efforts will impact each group. Now, by forcing yourself to be crystal clear on who your best customers are, as well as who they're not, and the way in which they engage with your hotel, you'll provide the best chance to compete with the big dogs and the arenas that really matter, while ignoring the ones that don't. Now, it's not too late to level the playing field, but we need to move quickly. At Focal, we're helping hoteliers do so by assisting them in identifying their most profitable customers and improving their outbound sales, marketing, and revenue generation efforts. Now give me a call today, and I'd be happy to show you how we do so. Thanks for tuning into this week's episode of Mathlete Mondays. Now, if you enjoyed it, please take a few seconds to share this with your network. And as always, if you're interested in additional episodes, please head over to focalrevenue.com slash content. I'll catch up with you soon, but in the meantime, good luck outrunning the competition.